he's someone who's in charge of um, the scalp hunting division of the circus, which is a lower floor, uh, slightly more um, visceral and animalistic level of spying in those days. It, it, scalp hunters were people who were part of operations. They'd very often be sent to foreign climes with um, faked IDs, and their job would be to go and do a one-off operation. His power is purely based on his intelligence, on his integrity and, and his dogged determination. But what he has as a character, which I think is eternally enigmatic and draws you in, is that rather in the way that he operates with people to understand, manipulate and control the situation, he lets everything come to him. The room temperature changes to him. He, he completely and utterly beguiles people into thinking he's harmless and possibly a bit ineffectual because he's just contained. That's a very powerful thing. Thomas is someone who shies away from cliches of the spy genre, so um, two men talking in a car in profile is going to be a rare occurrence in this film. Um, phone box discussions or any kind of phone discussions are going to be quite a rare occurrence in this film, and I think it forces um, the clandestine into the open, so it means your physical awareness and you being in tune with your environment. It's, it's an utterly different sort of geography suddenly to what you'd normally expect. Um, and without those sort of um, uh, safety ropes, it means that all these conversations, that some of the most intimate ones happening in very exposed places, take on this very dangerous air, but surely somebody could overhear. So is that person listening? Maybe that person over there isn't reading a paper, they're actually watching. It, it, it means there's, there's a continual line of tension, which even just a camera angle with these more exposed figures can really kind of bring out. And um, Hoyter and Thomas are just, they're masters at that. Bill is a very senior figure and, uh, in what is known as the circus, and um, there's been a shift of power. I think on the whole he's very much looked up to. I think some of the younger members of the organization hero worship him. Uh, he's seen as having a kind of glamour. Uh, Lawrence of Arabia, I think, is how he sees himself and how I think a lot of people si subscribe to that self-image. Um, a figure who um, has a kind of dashing, um, sort of a rather cavalier uh, desire to do things perhaps not quite according to the rules. So witchcraft is coming in from Merlin. Witchcraft is this rich uh, and intelligence which is all too good to be believed as far as control is concerned. So this sets up a battle between Alaline, who defends this in source of intelligence and uh, wants it to be true because it pleases the minister and it, it looks great and it makes them all look good and it, it makes the whole thing look like a well-oiled machine. And Control and Smiley are rather suspicious of the information simply because it's so good. It's a great pleasure to work with them. I mean, that's the greatest pleasure of all, really. There's no, you don't have to do anything. <clears throat> you know, with that lot, you just, you, it, you react. It's a, it's a free ride. So, um, and it was one of the great draws, of course. I mean, Thomas Alfredson is, is, I think, the thing that drew all of us initially. Um, I mean, there was no downside to this. There really was no hesitation. I mean, be even before I read it, I, I just knew this had to be something to be involved with. All these characters are extremely lonely. I think it's one of the things that strikes you as you inhabit them. Many, many years ago, I remember somebody uh, mis misinterpreting the Le Carre novels as very much boy stuff without any emotion, and I think it couldn't be further from the truth. I think they're full of a very profound sense of melancholy. And um, I think the loneliness is partly as a result of what they do.
you know, I think everybody got very, very excited and very starstruck to meet David. Um, he has immense charm. And, of course, when you're playing a character and your, your creator comes to the set, it, it is a bit like God, you know, uh, taking flesh and, and walking among us. Control? Well, control is really what control suggests. Um, he's the head of MI6. Control is privy. We never know quite how to the fact that there is a mole in the top five of MI6, which is, as you can imagine, is a... a a huge hole in the outfit and it um, causes him great agony huge amount of pain because these are his great these are the people that he works with this this is his life's work you're not talking about um, the sort of kind of fantasy spies you know, and, and so on. I'm not talking about Bond. I mean, it's a completely different thing, different genre altogether. Shadowy characters, yes, that's what they do. That's their business. What they are is quite different. What they are is, is a, 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 as I said, they're highly intelligent, extremely emotional, but... Uh, it's, it, it isn't over, it's not lots of shouting, but the emotion is underneath, absolutely all the way through with everybody. He is the king of cool, really. I mean, he wouldn't be, as I say, in life, you wouldn't notice him. But under the microscope of the drama, you scrutinize him. And you find that this, is, this man is seriously intelligent, wise, and cool. He's a quite uh, an unlikely actor for, for Smiley, you'd think, because he's such a visceral actor and so uh, slight and, and, uh, and physical. In, in, in many of the roles that he's played. But, uh, and to play Smiley, who is uh, the great stamp of Alec Guinness on it, um, bald and insignificant, and some, except, it's, of course, he's not insignificant, because nobody's insignificant when, you, uh, when you're under the searchlights of the drama. <laughs> 